Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our Spy the Market for this week, starting on the 27th of March. We are in the last week of uh, the March trading month, and uh, we're coming into it with a couple of interesting things for the final days that we have in front of us. Um, so let's go ahead and get into what's going to be on the table for the main focus for this week uh, so that we can be kind of prepared about uh, what are going to be the moving sectors and conversations that we need to follow, not so much for what they say, uh, but for the fact that they will have an impact of some sort. So let's get started. A few things that we're going to be of course looking at let's get started with our charts here sorry about that so there we go um oil oil is going to be one of those topics of the week opec uh representatives and non-representatives met this weekend and had a very, very uh, important discussion about what is currently happening and going on with uh, production. The last couple of weeks, to say the least, have been a shakeup to oil um, pricing, and it has not been a good shakeup at all. So, if we were to take a look at our charts. here and we were to focus on oil and we'll start with US oil here in just a second as this repopulates itself uh, okay we can see that uh, over the course of the last few weeks we have been seriously losing headway with the direction that we're having. Um, if we mark this out, we had a little further back. Here we go. Um, we had what is being called the Trump rally from the elections and what was being seen as um, positivity and momentum. Now, we also had the OPEC meeting right about this time that they wrapped up uh, their decision and act, well, it was actually a little bit later in the month, but um, where OPEC was seeing uh, the markets uh, as favorable because they had come to an agreement with some of the most difficult countries to get into this agreement with on cutting production. Now the last few weeks what has happened is we've been getting reports of an actual uh, increase once again coming into play on production numbers. Our cuts are not looking so great. Uh, we've had some back and forth with the negotiation on the Saudi side of things um, as far as production numbers and so everything's kind of had to come back not necessarily to the drawing board but to re-examining how this is going to move forward unfortunately uh, West Texas crude oil um, in large affected by actual US oil production not really lining up to the cuts that the rest of the market is looking for US oil production is showing that um, we are down to about $47 a barrel. Um, there might be uh, a little bit of a push on that, <clears throat> excuse me, going into the next couple of days if the negotiations, or not the negotiations, but the talks this weekend uh, are actually showing favorable. Now, Oops, sorry about that. Um, on in the event uh, that we don't keep up the progress, don't portray 
the progress that is expected, we may likely actually see oil prices continue to fall. And I have a feeling that despite the fact, you know, I think that the markets as a whole, global markets and everything, um, are kind of exhausted by expectations and drive of news. So nearly the last year and a half, oil markets have moved based on expectation of what should come to pass over a given amount of time based on things that have not happened yet. Okay. Um, I think we're, we're a little worn out from that. And so the goal of being at $50 above $50 for oil pricing, this is all going to really have to see some results in some of our economic data in uh, some of uh, the reports that start coming out from oil numbers. So when we start seeing more information like this, um, we may actually start to see more of an increase. That as a whole, as a holding number, is probably not going to be quite so immediate. But this right now may stop some of the bleeding <laughs> of oil prices as we're seeing them. Okay. All right. So um, in addition to oil being big conversation this week, we're going to also see that, um, you know, last week we closed out and we had some pretty... Uh, shaking markets from the uh, overhaul to the Affordable Care Act that was on the table. Two days, it went to Congress for a vote. The vote got stalled on both occasions and then eventually pulled. It was a it is actually a huge marker to the current administration and what can be expected of them. Now, to be fair, this was an aggressive one, but it is one of the main ones, the main promises of the administration that drove the market to begin with when we came out of the elections. So we go back and we take a look, say at the Dow or the Diamonds, DIA for the Dow, and what we get is that the surprise of our elections that rallied the overall markets, it rallied on two major causes. Health care because of the potentials of the reform that were coming and financials. Okay, uh, because of the impact that it was going to have towards raising interest rates, which did happen after the elections twice now, and for uh, which, of course, does affect the financials and it gives them a boost as borrowing costs go up, and then therefore uh, banks and such organizations are making more money. So that sector, healthcare sector, these sectors pushed up because of the elections. But in addition to that, uh, the the promises of the new administration included certain tax reforms and job numbers, improvements, right? Uh, and things along those lines that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, generated the thought that, that we were going to see a push and an improvement to the economy. These things overlap, correct? So the markets drove up on these two expectations. So now what has happened now? Now we have attempted the first major run and push towards the uh, change in the Affordable Health Care, uh, Affordable Care Act that has not worked out quite so well uh, for 
what we thought would potentially happen. Um, again, never really knowing the details. We just we had an expectation, right? Well, putting one issue to bed, the issue of health care for the time being, I don't know when this is going to come back into play, but for the time being, putting that to bed uh, puts on the table this week the next set of uh, changes and administration policies that are going to be put into place or put before Congress this week are around tax reform. Okay, so again, not really on the basis of uh, you know our what are where are the changes going to come in. The fact that they will propose these changes, this is what everyone's going to be paying attention to, and the market will be no different, no different. And so, what we noticed is over the last week, with um, a lot of the issues around healthcare and such, we didn't hold up so well. Um, if you were to take a look at our, the futures going into this week's trading, which by the way, we're already half a day into the trading uh, for this week because our markets have already, or the markets for the futures have already opened, you'd see that the futures are actually down a little bit. Now, to be, to be fully fair, okay, our markets are not fully trading right now. So we are riding off of the influence of the global markets. And as it stands, we're having pressure being already pushed down a bit on the dollar because um, what we're seeing globally is that investors are moving away from the risk into more safety as we start this week off. So you're having a lot of uh, different economies that are starting up their trading day. Um, we are if I'm not mistaken, we're just getting into uh, the European markets. It's going to be are just opening or will be opening very shortly, and um, we have uh, already seen where the pressure on on all of us is going down, and this is an indication that investors are leaving the risk. Okay, they're moving into other safeties. If we were to actually um, let me add here gold on this movement uh, well we won't see this until tomorrow because this is the ETF so we can't really take a look at the futures on this um, or anything like that but what we would see is that gold um, as well as the dollar moving down gold is going to be taking a little bit of a rally you can look at that even in the pre-market on the ETF or if you um, pull up some futures on your broker's account you'll see that this is going to fare very well for safeties like gold in the um, currency markets um, you've got the yen that's already pushing higher for the week to kick things off and it's the lack of certainty towards what is coming up this week that is driving this. So Dow futures, S&P futures, these are all already starting out a good bit lower. We've gapped down. So expect gapping down in the markets tomorrow, um, especially with our ETFs. Uh, what we will find having the momentum out of all of this, okay, and, and again, a lot of this down draw is going to be driven by the uh, financials in this case. If we pull up our banks here, some of these are going to have a little bit less certainty. You're going to get a little bit more push to the downside because, um, oh, this should be Citigroup, because we're waiting on hearing some finality to these tax reforms and seeing how else they're going to um, influence our financials. As it stands right now, financials are trying to make a comeback. Okay, uh, from some very strong moves to the downside. And, uh, you know, tax reform could be one of those things that pushes that momentum. But we won't know until the details of the bill proposal come in front of Congress and the President signs off and we find out if they will pass or not. And what is the, the, the clincher of all of this and what is making this very difficult is the fact that we can't really say right now 
that the new administration has enough influence to be able to pass this. One of the um, downsides of how the health care reform got pulled last week is the fact that there was a lot of divisiveness, not just from our two major parties, but within the very administrative party. And that makes the market uncomfortable because how do we know we're going to push things forward? How do we know that the administration with all that it has promised is now able to fulfill what it's done? Now, this is not a political conversation. So we're not, you know, breaking down, well, you know, eventually this can occur and we've only just started. We are in just the second month of this administration being in place and not all the players are even in place right now. Right. There's still a lot of moving, moving around. You know, they're still moving into the White House, basically. But the fact of the matter is that what could possibly happen over the next four years is not what the market is concerned with right now. The market is very much concerned with where do we currently stand now for the most part I think that there's a large part of the market outside of the financials and outside of um, health care which is going to be another one that this this is a sector that might find some stamina in this week after what has happened last week so don't be surprised if your health care stocks like New United Healthcare Humana Aetna Pfizer um, and these such find their way to a little bit more momentum higher as long as nothing else comes into play because of what happened last week now again this is not a political conversation so there are clearly many more details that can unfold outside of uh, the major overhaul that was expected that can still influence health care but um, in general what what I'm trying to get at is that uh, there are lots of sectors in the market that are not being affected by necessarily <clears throat> excuse me the week to week direction of these changes that are coming in place with the new administration okay and I think that is part of why even though we are pulling back and of course what everybody's concerned about right now is are we gonna have a correction right is this going to take away from the bullishness that we've had <clears throat> excuse me the dollar has already um, gotten to the point of threatening to take all of the movement back from the elections now if we look at the diamonds and we look at the elections we're back here okay that's not exactly the threat that's on the table and quite frankly the moves that we're having pulling back in this position if you um, are in our AOD sessions during the week you'll know that I have been pointing out very strongly that the weekly time frame on our Dow on our diamonds is really very much in line with a very normal move to the upside for all that we have rallied okay and <clears throat> this is the beginning of last year so this is after we finished uh, correcting our issues last year so we pull up we pull back we pull up we pull back we pull up we pull back we pull up and what are we doing right now we're pulling back does that not seem to you like the type of trend now mind you this is a weekly time frame and what that really means is that we have to remember that we're we're eliminating a lot of the noise on a day-to-day -day scale because a lot of it is noise we find ourselves having immediate reactions to something and then fixing it in the next couple of days the weekly the monthly these eliminate a lot of that noise now when it comes to the trades that we're taking on a daily basis the reason we don't want to go so big on this noise is because the range that we are giving the momentum because we are talking about so much time may not be adequate for a trade that we want to take today and get out in the next few days but it does help us to more appropriately gauge the movements that we are taking and so what I'm saying right now on this is that we really have a lot of room to go I mean think about it we spent a long time just trying to break 
well, not even, uh, we spent a reasonable amount of time trying to break 200, right, on the, on the, da on the diamonds, or 20,000 on the Dow, and we never fully adequately tested that level, did we? We just kept going. We just kept going. So here we are in a position where information is not quite so stable. Now, under, now realize this. When it comes to more, um, <clears throat> when it comes to more, um, how do I say, uh, precise information, for example, if we took a look at, let me pull this up here real quick. See if I can get this. Here we go. Here is the earnings calendar for this week. Not earnings calendar, excuse me. Um, the economic calendar for this week. We would see that, you know, we've got some important news that's coming up this week as far as day to day gauging of what the market can give us, right? Okay, aside from all of the Fed speakers that are poised to speak this week. I mean, there's a lot, right? Uh, we have things like, um, we have consumer confidence, which is a big deal. Okay. We have pending home sales numbers. We have our weekly petroleum status. We know already we're going to be watching numbers for oil. So that's definitely another big deal. We have uh, GDP numbers, jobless claims as always. We've got to make sure that our, our movements are staying consistent. Jobless claims last week was a little bit iffy. Um, we have the Bloomberg Comfort Index, right? Um, we have uh, then going into Friday, we've got uh, personal income outlays right and of course our Baker Hughes report which goes right back to the conversation with oil so we've got some rather normal let's watch this for economic data uh, situations that are coming up as well and then throw on top of that all the different Fed speakers that are going to be in situations to definitely address to the conversation of the forward movement of the economy uh, Analysts are already starting to speculate that June will be the next interest rate increase. It will be on June before we even know it. And what's going to, the Fed going to be watching? The Fed is going to be watching for these economic data points to be consistent and continuously growing. What the market is going to be watching is for the balance between solid economic data and a continuation of normal movement or non-nervousness from the market for economic uh, or political things that are also happening. Now, I think on a whole, the markets are probably pretty much had enough of the, all the politics. But the fact is we're not done. We're just getting started. We're going to see probably more things, you know, coming along the way as more things are proposed. And we just have to be ready for them. So, um, again, major, major, major focuses for this week is going to take us to conversations about um, uh, the healthcare sector. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, as they are kind of shaking off the nervousness from uh, the initial ACA reform from last week. Now, again, it's not over. We're not done having this conversation, but it is a very big part of it uh, that is over and done with for now, and they could breathe a sigh of relief, and probably uh, you'll find investors looking to take advantage of how they'll take advantage going in through the rest of the year. And then, of course, the financials, because we will be watching and paying attention to tax reform um, issues. So your financials are going to come in really big here. Bank of America, Wells Fargo, here's Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo, um, JP Morgan. These are some of the top uh, performers for our Dow and our S&P 500. So the markets may take some serious uh, attention onto those. Uh, of course, some of the rest of these are also quite interesting when we see their movements as far as uh, being pushed by the market themselves. Now, 
in addition to that, like I said, oil is going to be a topic of conversation. Now, the general items that come to mind when we talk about the energy and oil sector as far as the stock market versus what oil is doing, there is a very big lag between the overall momentum. So most of these stocks are in a bearish situation right now. And I would not be surprised if we continued to see that bearishness pull through un until we had a very definitive change in direction and break of some very key price levels on oil, which is going to take some time to develop, which would be when I believe we would see more of the turnaround in the oil pricing. So you look at Halliburton, um, you look at <clears throat> excuse me, Chevron, uh, Tesoro, and all of these Hess. These bearish movements are not going to just turn around because we might get a slight bump in the near future in oil pricing. And again, that's a bump that we'll be lucky if it lasts, you know, more than a few days, quite frankly. So what we're looking here for, I think, is mostly the momentum that could step in. I'm not saying that it necessarily will, but it's very possible we can get some additional momentum. And if not, we just have the continuation of a downward trend that we can still take in a bearish position, either um, by shorting or by buying puts or something like that into that movement. Okay. So we have, oops, sorry about that. Hold on one second. We have basically taken a look, um, you know, headlines, and, and these are the headlines that are going to be big all week long. Uh, they're going to be around oil pricing, around tax reform, um, around, oh, let's, let's, let's hope the conversations start to die down about the healthcare stuff because it's happened. We need to be able to move on. Um, politically speaking, we're probably still going to hear a lot about it, but for as far as the market, the market's, it's it's already absorbed this information and we're on to the next thing. So it's something you may hear a lot about, but the market is done reacting to it. It really is. It's gonna it's it's gonna have some positivity, like I said, for some of these healthcare stocks, but overall the market itself is it's on to the next thing. Um the last thing to mention for uh the week is going to be, of course, the topic of earnings. Nothing major. This is not a big deal this week. Uh, we've got like f maybe five stocks <laughs> that are going to be overall um, like major ballers for the week. Um, on Monday after market, we've got Red Hat. And then on Tuesday, we're going to see, <clears throat> I do believe there's a couple on Tuesdays, Carnival, uh, Carnival Core is going to be a big one. And I know lots of students actually have been either trading or have traded uh, just in the last few months in Carnival. So that's one to realize, hey, we're going to be having earnings on that this week. Also McCormick, um, it's just something to catch the attention of, um, the, the uh, consumer staples because that McCormick will fall into consumer staples and then on Wednesday we have a couple after hours uh, that go into Thursday and then that's about it as far as excitement Lululemon uh, which is a very popular uh, retail to trade and then I think that is it and that's that's pretty much it if I'm not mistaken <clears throat> for the week. So nothing super exciting, nothing major to be, you know, but do realize that you will hear some buzz about, you know, if you hear buzz about earnings, it's going to probably revolve around some, some of those participants. Um, but we're not in the earnings season. So of course we don't really expect to be seeing all of these companies reporting uh, earnings just realize that it doesn't take everything off the table because like I mentioned those uh, few that we just talked about they're pretty big deals when it does come to earnings so uh, that is definitely something that will be 
paid attention to. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, pretty much the overall scope of the week. Again, my name is Angie Dixon, Senior Options Analyst here at Market Traders Institute, and uh, this has been our weekly Spy the Market. Look forward to seeing you guys in the AOD sessions throughout the week. Uh, have any questions about that, of course, get in touch with uh, the account reps here, and they'll be able to guide you into that. Y'all have a great, great trading week, and we'll do this again next week. Adios.